MLB Network just dropped their top 100 players in Major League Baseball for the 2024 season, or as they call it, right now. So as the ranking man himself, I gotta see what they're doing here because MLB Network has had some suspect rankings in the past, and I got a feeling that this one's also gonna have some question marks in it. So let's go ahead and compare and contrast what their rankings look like compared to mine. Of course, I only do the top 50, but I'm gonna look at the top 100 in total. And getting it started off at number 100, they have Ellie De La Cruz, who, that's fine. I have no problem with it. Like, again, you're getting towards these 90 to 100 range. As long as there's no one that's, like, egregious, I am totally cool with Ellie De La Cruz being a top 100 player, and I think he very much will be a top 100 player in the 2024 season. Matt McClain as well, another good player. This makes sense. Missed some time, missed some time right now in spring training, so we won't see how much he plays, but I can buy that along with Nathaniel Lowe, top 100, very solid. I actually think this might be, like, a little bit low for low maybe more in that 80 range but again i guess i'm just being a little nitpicky here we'll say like there is this group of first basemen here with low casas and nailer and in my rankings i went casas low nailer they did the opposite nailer casas low I, I like all these players. I think they're all good. I just don't know how Josh Naylor is better than Tristan Casas right now and Nathaniel Lowe. Doesn't compute in my head, but whatever against in the 90s, Royce Lewis. This is the first guy that is on my top 50 players list. I was super aggressive with Royce Lewis. I went with him at number 50. That was kind of like my throw in, my personal pick of someone who I think could surprise some people. Not that you'd be surprised by Royce Lewis, but yeah, we're off by about 45 here with each other, but maybe there's more realistic. I don't know. Gabriel Moreno. I don't know how you put him ahead of Royce Lewis. I'm not sure about that one. Cal Raleigh, I feel the same way. Not sure how you put him ahead of even those first basemen that are listed. Cal Raleigh's really good. Maybe him, but not Gabriel Moreno. I don't know. I... <laughs> Moreno's a good player. I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit here and take a look at what his numbers were last year. They weren't phenomenal. They weren't that great. Good defensively, of course. Dylan Cease, 92, and Nivaldi, 91. Again, I think Cease is better than Nivaldi, but he had a bad season. I don't know, right now, who would you choose? I'm still probably choosing Dylan Cease and not Nathan Nivaldi, the guy whose arm is getting ready to fall off anytime soon. Again, it's the 90s. Not going to spend too much time on these. Let's move on to the 80s now. Whoa, coming in at 90, Jordan Montgomery. Okay, uh, he is one spot behind Matt Chapman. Chapman, of course, did not make my list, but uh, man, Chapman at 89, maybe that's more so where he belongs. Hassan Kim at 88. Uh, yeah, uh, you could, I could see Hassan Kim. He played like a top 50 player last year. I could see him being in that 50 to 65 range. Feels a little harsh. Nolan Jones as well, I think, could be like in that 65 to 75 range, 87. I, I don't know. I'm being nitpicky. Let's just keep going. Anthony Santander, that's fine. JD Martinez. Yeah, I, Nolan Jones is better than JD Martinez right now. So is Hassan Kim. So is probably Matt Chapman. I don't agree with that. Say a Suzuki at 84. Love me some Saya, but need to see him play a little bit better just to get going. Marcelo Zuna, 83. The Contreras brothers at 81 and 82. See, this is where I have a problem. William Contreras is definitely much better than his brother Wilson. And even going back to my catcher rankings, like there is a clear difference there. I don't see this one. I can't rationalize how they're in the same range and right next to each other to me doesn't make sense also Wilson Contreras being better than Cal Raleigh also doesn't make any sense but again whatever I, who cares Edwin Diaz 80 whatever he's a reliever that's fine I probably wouldn't rank a reliever this highly but it doesn't really matter Max Muncy 79 yeah Royce Lewis is better than Max Muncy he just is I think there's a lot of players on this list right now that are better than Max Muncy who struggled the last couple years still a really good hitter but ah I don't know. I don't know. Isak Paredes, 78. Josh Lowe, 77. I like that aggressive ranking on Josh Lowe. George Springer, 76. No, sir. No, sir. We're talking about right now. George Springer is coming off of, like, arguably one of the worst seasons of his career where he was arguably the most healthy. He played 154 games, the second most games he's ever played in a season, and he just wasn't very good going into his 34-year-old season. I don't, I don't see it. I don't see how he's better than a lot of the guys you just ranked right now. No. George Kirby's at 75? Oh, George Kirby's, like, really good. Really good. I don't know. I guess I'm really tough with pitchers in my rankings, but George Kirby was pretty close to the top 50 for me. He's really good. Tyler Glasnow, 74. Glasnow would be another guy I think I have close to my top 50. Bradish is ahead of Glasnow. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Yes and no. Yes and no. Like, Brash was really good last year. I think he's a very good pitcher, but Glasnow, man, stuff is nasty. He's just different. Yelich, 72. Brian Reynolds, 71. I actually think those are pretty appropriate places for them. Brandon Nimmo at 70. We know I'm going to vehemently disagree with that one. I don't know how he went from 54 in 2023 to drop 16 spots to 70 last year. Nimmo had a 127 OPS plus. I guess defensively, he was a little bit worse, but he was healthy. Hit the most home runs in his career. I don't get the drop. I really don't. There's not much of a difference over what he did in 2022. Call me a biased Mets fan, but 
but I think he's very much a top 50 player. Towards the back end, I have him at 45, but 70 feels like not correct at all. JP Crawford, 69. Nice. I think JP Crawford is in the right range here. He is borderline top 50. See him do it for one more year, and he can definitely, definitely be inside the top 50. I think you put him better than Correa. I really do. Like, we're again, we're talking about right now, and this is the problem with MLB Network's rankings, is sometimes they do right now, and sometimes they don't. And it feels like, with this case, they did not do right now. Right now, J.P. Crawford is better than Carlos Correa. Right now. I had J.P. Crawford ranked better than Carlos Correa right now. So, I, I don't I don't get it. I'm not sure. Dansby Swanson, fine. I agree better than both of them. Whoa, Ozzy Albies. Ozzy Albies not making the top 50 is honestly surprising. I had him at 38. And MLB Network right now has him at 66. Where? Where are the lines connecting here? I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. Cattell Marte at 65. I love Cattell Marte a little bit more than most. I had Cattell Marte at number 33. He was pretty close to Ozzy Albies in my rankings. So they have them bunched up together, but yet in the 60s. I don't see how they're not top 50 players, clearly. Not top 40 players, clearly. Justin Steele at 64. Yeah, I mean, listen. Justin Steele was really good last year. But again, right now, I don't think he's better than Glasnow. I don't think he's better than George Kirby. The numbers are so close where I'm going to take the guys with stuff whose stuff is better right now. Kodai Senga, 63. Similarly, I love Kodai. I mean, we now know the injury stuff, so that kind of skews things. But I didn't have Kodai ahead of those guys either. I thought he was in the Justin Steele range. Not so much being better than Glasnow and George Kirby. Whatever. Justin Verlander is not top 62. There's no way. There's no way, guys. I love Verlander. Like a fine wine, he only gets better with age, except now. Now he's old. He looked not great with the Mets last year. He looked okay with the Astros. Prove me wrong, Verlander. I'd love to see it, but I don't think he's here. I don't think he's better than some of the guys that we've been listing. And Yoshinobu Yamamoto, 61, fine. Cool. I'm down with it. He's looked disgusting in spring training from what we've seen thus far, and the stuff is out of control. 60, Josh Hader, 20 spots better than Edwin Diaz? Fuck no. Devin Williams, whoa, Devin Williams at 59? No, what are we talking about here? What is going on that we're ranking relievers almost in the top 50? Come on, MLB Network. What? Christian Walker, 58. I mean, I love Christian Walker, but is, is he almost a top 50 player? No, I don't think so. Is Schwarber almost a top 50? Probably not either. Left field, he can't play defense, and he's a home runner walk guy. Like, he's good. These guys have value. Again, I want this to be known. When I disagree, it's because it's not because I think the player's bad. These players are all good. It's just, this isn't where they belong. Pablo Lopez at 56, love it. He's a borderline guy for sure. Framber Valdez, 55, whatever. I think he's a little bit further down. Castillo, borderline, cool. Xander Bogarts at 53. Uh, no, I think he's a top 40 player still. Again, I think they're probably going to be heavier on the pitching than I was in my rankings. I think I only ranked, what, like seven or eight pitchers in my top 50? I think they're going to be really aggressive with seeing some of the guys that are close to the top 50 right now. But Bogarts, I don't, I don't see him outside the top 50. Vlad Guerrero is at 52. That's fine. He did not really play that well. He dropped out of my top 50. And Bellinger at 51. I had him at 49. So that's the closest we've been on anybody thus far. Bellinger, 49 on mine, 51 on MLB Network. Getting the top 50 started at 50. Michael Harris, I had at 47. Love it. Sonny Gray at 49. Not in my top 50. I Sonny Gray was great. Again, stuff-wise, he's it's tough. It's tough. We just haven't seen Sonny Gray. Whatever. I don't know. It's fine. I'm I'm kind of spitting here. Again, because my rankings aren't right now. It's projecting as to what I think is gonna happen next year, where MLB Network is doing right now. Whatever. Max Freed, 48. No. No, no, no. Max Free is not a top 50 player in baseball. There's no way. He's a good pitcher. Not a top 50 player. Not a top 50 player. No, not yet. He's close. Sean Murphy, 47. I had him at 44. Cool. JT Ramuto ahead of Sean Murphy, huh? Really? For right now? Uh, no, but JT Ramuto. I don't get that. I don't understand that. He wasn't in my top 50, so, uh, I don't know. He's, he's close-ish, but he did take a step back last year. He's, he's getting older. He's getting older. Will Smith, 45. Love it. I had Will Smith at 39. Cool. Alex Bregman, 44. Yep, he's a top 50 player, and Bregman was at 30 for me, so we were a bit off there, but again, that's close enough. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Luis Rise, 43. No, no, no. We're not putting Luis Rise at 43. We're not. A guy who's terrible defensively at second base he's not good in the field if he is he's average at best and he's a contact king oh we're not putting him at 43 he's not he's not better than alex bregman he's not better than michael harris he's not better than cody bellinger he's not better than a lot of the guys that were listening he's not better than xander bogarts Cattel Marte, ozzy albies what are we talking about here if i see bryson stott Inside this top 50, I actually, like, might put a hole in my computer. Might punch a hole in the screen of this camera. Like, what? Luis Arias, 43? Ahead of Albies and Cattell Marte at the same position? No! Logan Webb, 42? Ooh! This is the closest one we're at. 
I had Logan Webb at 43. They got him at 42. Good on you, MLB Network. Kevin Gaussman at 41. I had Kevin Gaussman at 32. So we're in the relative range. That's fine. Top 40 now. We've got Randy Rosarena in left field. I did not rank Randy Rosarena. He was a borderline top 50 guy for me. Adolis Garcia comes in at number 39. I had Adolis at 28. So I think he's a little bit better than what they think. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I gotta, I gotta see what they're going here. That Luis Arise one still is playing rent-free in my head, and I don't know how they did that. Yandy Diaz at 38. I had him at 46. So they're more aggressive with the guy who plays first base than the guy who plays outfield. I don't, I don't understand it sometimes. Pete Alonso at 37. Oh, we matched. I had Pete Alonso at 37. Woo, confetti. Yeah, we both got one at the same spot. Number 36, Paul Goldschmidt. I had Paul Goldschmidt at 42. Bobochet 35. I did not rank Bobochet my top 50. Blue Jays fans get on me every single time. But simply put, he is not a definitive top 50 player right now. I think he's borderline, 100%. Like, you can make the argument he could have been on there over Bellinger and Royce Lewis. I don't think he's top 35. There's... I Bichette at 35 feels really high. Feels like we're carrying that name and prospect pedigree a little bit. A little bit. He's still pretty bad at shortstop. 34, Gunnar Henderson. Love it. I had Gunnar Henderson at 31, so we are close. Nolan Arenado at 33. I had Arenado where? 26. Again, relatively fine. Uh, no issues. Devers, 32. I think I had Devers around there, right? 35. Nice. Zach Gallon, 31. I think Gallon was down more. 41 for me. Again, this is just a difference in opinions with how to rank pitching in terms of going up against hitters as well. This is a list. This is a list to say the least. Blake Snell at 30. That's fine. I had him at 48, but again, Different how we do our rankings. Corbin Burns, 29. I had him at 36. Zach Wheeler, 28. I had Zach Wheeler at 34. Like, we're, we're still in the same realm, at least. Lou Bob at 27. Where did I put Robert? I put Robert as a top 20 player, and I really do think he is. Low-key, Dark Horse MVP candidate. I know he's on a terrible, terrible White Sox team, so that's going to make it hard. That's why he's a Dark Horse one. But he's going to probably hit, like, 35, 40 home runs and steal 35, 40 bases, like, and play phenomenal defense. He's so good. 27 versus 20, though. I can't get on him, but he is a top 20 player. Tatis at 26. I I had Tatis at 19. He's a top 20 player, in my opinion. Can't miss there. Lindor at 25. Hey, Lindor at 25. Wow. We the, the ones that we've matched on have weirdly been the Mets players. You call me a biased Mets fan? MLB Network and their terrible list and me are right. Is that concerning a little bit? Maybe. But I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it as I'm not biased. So Lindor 25, Machado 24. Where did I put Machado? I think he was... He's 13 for me. I know he had a down year, but he's just not that bad. Kyle Tucker at 23. Whoa, Kyle Tucker at 23? What? Why is he not top 20? Why is Kyle Tucker not top 20? What are we talking about here? Why is Kyle Tucker so slept on? I don't get it. Top 13 for me. I had him at number 12. Like, wow. Okay, I don't know. I don't like that ranking. Altuve, 22. I had him at 24. That's fine. Marcus Simeon at 21. I had Simeon at 17. Close enough. Again, I still think he's a top 20 player. I will say, no Bryson Stott in here. So inside the top 20 now, Bobby Witt is going to be number 20. And I had Bobby Witt Jr. at 27. Close. Adley Rushman at 19. I had him at 23. Close. So we're not too far off. The Luis Arias one's really the only one that's been crazy thus far where I've been like, what? What planet are we on? And missing Kyle Tucker, I guess, too, was pretty insane. Putting him outside the top 20 is like criminal. Corbin Carroll at 18. I had him at 22. Sure. Spencer Strider at 17. I had Strider at 21. Again, sure. Trey Turner at 16. I think I dropped Trey quite a bit. Yeah, 29. I know he ended the year super hot. So it's interesting. If they're going to reward Trey Turner for ending the year super hot, why are they not penalizing the guys who ended the year ice cold? Whatever. MLB Network, you do your thing. Austin Riley at 15. I had him at 14. I had Austin Riley at 14. Very, very close. J-Ram at 14. I don't know how you don't think J-Ram's a top 10 player in baseball. He was phenomenal defensively last year. If there was ever anything to take a shot at, it was his glove, and he was great. So... This feels like a bad miss to me. He's clearly top 10. I don't know how he drops from 8 to 14. Matt Olson at 13. I had him at 15. Cool with that. Mike Trout, 12. I still put Trout in the top 5. That's me being a Trout guy. I just, I won't believe it. I won't believe he's not a top 10 player until I see him actually play poorly. Even with the injuries, he's still disgusting. So, I don't know. Trout's still top 10 to me until he actually plays bad. Bryce Harper at 11. I had Bryce Harper. Where was he? I had Harper at 16. I think moving to first base, maybe in retrospect, was kind of a tougher ranking for me than he deserved because obviously offensively he's one of the 10 11 12 best hitters in the game here's where we get going now the top 10 let's see it top 10 we have got julio rodriguez at 10 i had j-rod at 10 as well well done, MLB Network. We agree, and J-Rod can definitely be like a top five, top three player by the end of the season. At number nine, they have Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was my highest ranked pitcher. He came in at 18. So again, just a difference of how we rank pitching in terms of hitters and everyday players. It's really tough for me to put a pitcher inside the top 10. You have to be so out of control dominant. Garrett Cole is sick, just not top 10 in my eyes in terms of players in the league. Number eight, Jordan Alvarez. I had Jordan at 11, again, because he's mostly a DH. Like, I know he's a left fielder, but he's not a left fielder. He's a left fielder because of the Crawford boxes. It's what Whatever. It's 
he can be a top 10 player. I'm really cool with that. Seven, they're going to go with Juan Soto. I had Juan Soto at six. Very close. No issues there. He is a top seven player. Six, they went Corey Seager had Seager at eight. They're actually a little more aggressive with Seager. Wow, I'm surprised. Uh, but yeah, he's disgusting. Corey Seager is clearly one of the best players in the league. Five, Freddie Freeman. I had Freeman at seven. Again, that was where Trout went for me. I think a difference of what we were looking for, but Freddie Freeman is disgusting. The guy's never been bad ever for even for a second in his life. Number four, Otani. That makes sense. Without pitching, he is not the number one player in the league right now, of course, but whenever he does get the ability to pitch, he is clearly the best player in baseball. So for me, yeah, I mean, we're going to put Otani one in my rankings. That's how I do him. But right now, cool with him being four. Number three is going to be Aaron Judge. I had Aaron Judge at four. Again, that's kind of like a, a shifting of players here, but I think he's only behind the two guys that I had in front of him that weren't named Shohei Otani, which would be Mookie Betts 2, yep, and Ronald Acuna 1. I, I, I think they got the majority of this list right, honestly, like not as much outrage. The weird pick, again, it's sticking out to me like crazy, is that Luis Arias one coming in at number 43. I can't really wrap my head around that one. Like all of a sudden we care about the guy who hits 340? I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, especially when, I don't know, he's terrible defensively too. And maybe a little aggressive on some of the relievers. But overall, I mean, I think it's a fine list. MLB Network has done way worse in the past. Where they got weird was kind of in that fringe range, which is where we disagree. But it does seem like, at least in terms of my opinion and their opinion, the best players in the league, we all know who they are. I'd love to know what you guys think about MLB Network's rankings down in the comment section below. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree with them? Who was better, mine or theirs? Let me know. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on my social media, at GiraffeNeckMark. Links are in the description. Thank you guys for watching. You know what to do from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all for another video. Bye!